All right. Hey, everybody. We are live. Thank you for tuning in to the stream. Uh, if you can't tell, my allergies are crazy today, so I'm really sorry for any sniffles. If you see that welcome screen come back up for a second, that's because I'm having a uh, sneeze attack that you don't care to see or hear. So please uh, appreciate your patience on that. Oh, look at all these people. Oh, my gosh. 20, 36 people. This is my most popular stream of all time. So uh, first, a huge, huge thank you to WizKids, or geez Louise, to Wizards of the Coast uh, and their PR firm for getting this over to me. This is my very first time ever getting an early review copy of a book, and I am absolutely super duper excited. So I've got the regular version. Check this out. So we will be looking at both of these. We've got the regular version, and we've got the uh, collector's edition. Now, I had one rule when they sent this over. They said I can't do a full page-by-page -page flip through. So that's why I, all these camera shots are going to be a little tight on the book. So we're, we're sticking to the one rule they gave me. Otherwise, uh, we're good to go. Uh, I plan to spend maybe an hour here flipping through. I'm going to focus mostly on the first, on the introduction and the character options. Uh, but then we'll be doing spin-off videos for everything else. So if you have any questions, anything in particular you want to see, Go ahead and throw it in the chat, and uh, we'll, we'll bounce back and forth. So if you're new here, I am Eric. Uh, this is Fry Minis. I talk d and I do mini painting. I'm on Instagram, Twitter, Patreon, YouTube, of course. Uh, please like and subscribe. Check me out. Join the Spud Club if you want to support the channel. Uh, okay, so let's take a look. So Van Richten's Guide to Ravenloft. Okay, I see in the chat already. Something about second skin. Yeah, so we'll we'll talk about the dark gifts. Uh, Barovia is really the only thing I care about. Barovia, okay. <laughs> so uh, I think most of you that are here who are interested in this have probably already seen the table of contents. Uh, but we've got character creation. Really, really great things in here. Uh, I'm absolutely floored at what a good job uh, Wizards did here making a horror theme up uh, okay and making sure your players understand it so they did great uh creating domains of dread the domains of ravenloft i'm only here so i don't get fined <laughs> yeah i love skittles uh horror adventure so we have a whole bunch of domains of dread horror adventures monsters of ravenloft huge list of monsters brain in a jar all right, so like I said, uh, my I'm very sorry, my allergies are awful. Give me one sec. <laughs> I actually have three Zyrtex in me right now, uh, way more than I should, uh, but normally I would have canceled this, but this is such a big deal. Uh, I wanted to make sure we got it in. How's my sound? Uh, this is a new mic I'm testing out. Uh, so here, let's flip over. So remember, we're keeping the shot close so we can't just do a screenshot of everything. So one thing I wanted to show you right off the bat. So uh, I know a pretty good amount of D&D stuff, but one of my biggest gaps of knowledge is Ravenloft type of stuff. So this I found extremely, thank you, Thank you, thank you, thank you, everybody. Uh, found this extremely helpful. Uh, this Seven Secrets of Ravenloft section. Ravenloft is not a world. So it's just like a like a plane of existence. Uh, the dark powers control everything. Domains imprison dark lords. So each domain has its own dark lord, like Strahd. Uh, the mists encompass all. And it encourage you, encourages you to use these mists as whatever you want. So it's like a DM tool, DM fiat. Uh, nowhere is safe. Heroes confront horrors. This is kind of a good guy versus bad guy kind of thing. And uh, only fear is certain. So everything will go crazy. we got some great production value going on. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Uh, and another section I really like here, Nightmare Logic. Uh, a lot of times with D&D &D games in general, you'll have your heroes come in, the players, and they, uh, they're like, oh, this is, why, why is this like this? This isn't okay. 
And here it talks about uh, that's just part of it. That's horror logic, nightmare logic. Uh, the people that live there, that's just how it's always been to them. They don't know anything different. So uh, just play along with that. And I think that's kind of cool. And some of the art. This thing is terrifying. <laughs> uh, treasure haunting bagman. No, thank you. A brain in a jar. <laughs> uh, lots of information, different ways to treat the uh, the dark powers. And we're only doing this flip through for the opening bit here. Uh, we've got some more information about domains and how to treat them just generally, what they do, how they operate. And even the Dark Lords are prisoners. Adventurers, we talk about how, like, why an adventurer would be in one of these places. And character creation. So before we jump into that, uh, I know this is miserable and I know this makes for a super awesome stream, but give me one more second. Okay, so let me know if you'd rather hear me sneeze than, uh, <laughs> than flip out for a second. Okay, so let's start up here. So, character creation. It sums up my feelings. Uh, yeah. This is a great conversation, by the way, everybody. Thank you. This is awesome. Uh, are there stats for the Dark Lords? Some of them. Okay, so. Uh, prepared to be scared. Haunted heroes. This talks about building a character for this kind of campaign. So uh, a character built for mythic odysseys of Theros will theoretically be a very different kind of character than a character built for a domain of dread character, a Ravenloft character. Uh, and we also talk about in here how it's important for everybody to be on the same page, to everybody to sign off on doing a horror thing, to knowing everybody's boundaries. I, that's what I think this is. I'm shocked at how good this is. Uh, and they talk about, please look at the bestiary. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. Um, and, and we talk about how, oh, you, I, I'm lost now. Oh, we talk about how it's, uh, you want your character to have fear. And it's important to know the difference between a player's fear and a character's fear. I'm telling you, I'm blown away how great this book is. And I've only had, I got it today. So I haven't read it cover to cover yet. Uh, and look at this art. This is a, a an orc, a full orc hero. That's interesting. Grady and Julie spinoff. <laughs> Dungeon class. Hey, DB, everybody's here. This is great. The Engineers Pack. Thank you, everybody, for showing up. This is great. If you ever want to talk more, hop on our Discord. I've got a link in the description. So, limit comedy. This is, this is one of the most important parts and hardest parts, I think, for any real-life game. Uh, how to do a horror hero heroes. Focus on the game. Stay off your phone. Limit comedy. It's hard to not joke at a table, especially when you've been playing a long time together. You all know each other. Uh, it's you're, you're welcome. Thank you. That orc is swap, um, but not not joking around. <laughs> the Dampier's in here, and I actually I have the PDF pulled up, and we'll take a look. We're almost we're almost there. Consent is a priority. Know what's too far. Add to your own terror. So you or a DM will want to encourage their players to go along with it. To if the DM explains a creature looks like this, to say, "Oh, does it look like this?" Because I'm afraid of that. Just get everybody on board. This is they could have been so easy to not cover this kind of stuff in this book and just go along with it, but they did it, and I love it uh, and enjoy the struggle. Just have fun with it. Cool. Okay. So lineages. Before we jump in. One more second. This is great. Thanks for sticking around. Uh, if any of you know me, uh, I'm a lifetime allergy sufferer and cleaned out the garage yesterday. Uh, it was a bad mistake. Okay, so lineages. This is if you are a transformed character. So the difference between a lineage and a race, a race is you're born an elf, for example. A lineage is you were born an elf, but then you got uh, bit by a vampire 
or something in one of these. And then you became this new race and it replaces it. But one really, really cool thing and I can't wait to show you uh, sticks around. So all of these, oh, what am I doing? I got the wrong camera. There we go. Lineages. What happened to me? All of all of the lineages use plus two and plus one or plus three. Don't plus one, 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 one. You can pick a lineage at level one or you can be transformed mid campaign, depending on character, sign off, depending on DM sign off. It's okay, I have allergies too. Thank you, Eric. It's a uh, Eric strategy. A little comedy is good to break the tension and dungeon class, that's a great point. Uh, this book does talk about how it's important to have moments of levity. It's important to have moments of hope. But if you're going for a Ravenloft, you want it to have that over, overwhelming sense of dread. But you need those sparkles. Otherwise, you won't shine. That's a good line. I just made that up. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, so languages, all they all start... Here. Uh, they all start with common and then one other language that makes sense for your character. Cool. Uh, creature type. So in the Unearthed Arcana, all of these had two creature types. So you're a humanoid and undead or construct. You're a humanoid and undead. You're a humanoid and fey. Nope. Now we are just one. Okay, so let me pull up my... Let's see. How do we want to do this? Okay. Let's look at the book first. So here we are. Lineages. I know all of you are taking screenshots right now. Let me, let me get this straight up. Okay. So the general text, I'm going to do a standalone video to cover all these in detail. But right now we're just trying to skim through it. So all this information here is you're not quite a vampire. You're not quite a regular person. Damn pure hungers. Life energy, psychic energy, spinal fluid. Still so cool. Uh, your origins, how you became a Dampier. Uh, examples of how a Dampier would fit in different domains of dread. And one more pause. Is anyone counting? <laughs> uh, okay. Damn fear traits. Here we go. Here's what here's what y'all want. Right there. I think I think uh I think we've got it all in the shot. Pepper scented candle. Yeah, I wish. Uh you are humanoid, medium or small, 35 feet. Now this is new. This is what's exciting. Colin Robinson, yes. Ancestral legacy. So all of the lineages have this new thing, and it's not in the UA. You if you replace a race with this lineage, so if you're transformed, you keep any skill proficiencies or climbing speed or flying speed or swimming speed that you got from it. <laughs> Gross, thanks. Uh, or if you have this new, so if you're level one Dampier, for example, you get two skill proficiencies. So if you're an Aarakocra, you would keep your flying speed. And I forget if they have any proficiencies but whatever uh you get the idea so you get a little bit of your original flavor mixed in with the new stuff i think that's a super cool way to cover it i think that's a great way to do it and i it's elegant okay so dampier you get dark vision uh you don't need to breathe you have spider climb uh you start out just climbing and then at third level you get full spider climb uh, and vampiric bite. So this is a take some Benadryl. <laughs> I, I wish, man. I wish it was that easy. Uh, lifelong sufferer, allergy shots. You name it, I've had it. But I'm I'm always happy to talk about allergies. <laughs> okay, so uh, this is a clarification from the UA. Uh, you add your Constitution modifier instead of your Strength modifier. I know in the UA it was a little ambiguous if it was both. Uh, I mean. Logically, of course, it's not both, but just to just it clarifies it here. So it uses your con for attack and damage, which is super cool. Uh, no, a dragonborn would lose its breath weapon. Oh, okay. Maybe I had an old one pulled up. 
Uh, okay. Uh, when you, so this is all the same. This is all the same. Yeah. So that's the only thing. Oh no, this changes. Uh, you you regain hit points equal to the piercing damage dealt by the bite. Previously, uh, it was damaged by the bite. Uh, so theoretically, if you somehow had, um, <laughs> you managed to get like flame tongue teeth, uh, that would do, do 2d6 fire damage that would have healed you in the past. Uh, but now it's just the piercing. Although flame tongue teeth still sound awesome. And if we can make that ha happen, <laughs> uh, I think it is worth working. Okay. So that is the damp here. Those are the stats of the damp here. All right. And so everybody, let me know if this is new or I just never noticed it, uh, right here in the corner in the book. Uh, I guess my focus is on here. Uh, it says Andrew Marr over here. It says Katarina Layden. So I believe that those are the artists. Have these always had the artist name in the book and the art in the side like that? I don't, I don't think so. It might've been there and I haven't noticed, but if it's either way, I love it. All right, before we go to the next one, give me one more second. All right, we have hex blood. So this is their hag or fey type, or I guess a, a hobgoblin with the with the new one uh, type, witchy type thing. So uh, we've got the same hex blood origins, uh, and it talks about how you can become a full hag, but if you if that happens to you, your your character is gone, uh, and you're you're not like playable anymore. So here are one pause per page. Thank you. Uh, okay, so this is unfortunately split on multiple pages. Uh, you are fey, so it's not humanoid and fey, it's just fey. You're medium or small. Again, you pick that when you start. 30 foot speed, ancestral legacy. So that same thing. You, you keep the skill proficiencies, special speeds. Uh, otherwise, you get two proficiencies. You keep your dark vision, or you, you get dark vision. Uh, the eerie token, the telepathic message, and the remote viewing. These, I believe were just kind of mixed in uh, to this as one like big option. And now it's broken out, but I didn't see any mechanical change there. And the rest, I believe, is actually the same. So if, you, if you're if you not familiar with the Unearthed Arcana, uh, you can break off a tooth or a fingernail or something, and you can use it as a token. And so you give that token to somebody. And then so you can, as like a hag, you can talk to that person remotely. You can spy on them. Uh, it's cool. And then you regrow it during a long rest. Uh, I actually grew it after 40. So 20 years. I, <laughs> thank you. Uh, um, I'll be 35 this year. So just five more years. Everybody I, growing up. Oh, when you're in your teens, you'll outgrow. Oh, when you're in your 20s. Oh, your 30s. So now 40s is the is the goal sign. Goal post. So I'll take it. Uh, and then hex magic. You can cast disguise self and hex. Uh, and this has that awesome thing that I know wizards doesn't like to go back and undo things or, or edit stuff, but I really wish they would for the, uh, other magic initiate feats and similar abilities. If you have spell slots, you can cast it, cast these spells with your spell slots and you can pick which modifier you use. It is so much better this way. So, so, so much better. It's easier. It's cleaner. I got older. My God, worse. Don't tell me that. Don't tell me that. Oh, and then here's the hag. Yeah, so you just, if you do it, it's cool. It's a great way to end the campaign. If you want to switch out a character, cool stuff, but don't expect to get a hag stat block to play. Maybe it's like a special one-off thing. All right. Reborn. So reborn, this is if you were dead, if you uh, were, if you're a construct, if you are some sort of something that used to be and then wasn't, and then now you are. So a really great example of one in here was um, so Lost Memories, Reborn Origins. Somewhere in here, it talks about uh, if you, you, oh. Uh, I don't know. Okay. If you were, you woke up on the table 
of some mad scientist and you're like whoa i think that's a really really cool way to make your character uh so this is cool art with this ghosty arm all right so this one is spread a little bit too but i think we can fit it on one okay so you are humanoid so that construct tag that undead tag those are gone you're just humanoid uh you're medium you're small 30 foot walking speed and one second I really appreciate y'all sticking around with me. I know this is miserable. Uh, I can't wait to go to bed. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, and side note, tomorrow I'll be on Nerdarchy Live. If anybody wants to check in, I'd love to, to hear you over there too. Nerdarchy Live on YouTube. Uh, okay. So same thing. You're humanoid, medium, small, 30 feet. So regular ancestral legacy. If only you can remove your no. Oh, man, I've thought of like when I was little, I thought, oh, what if I poured like hot wax? in my nose <laughs> how much can be shown uh this so once we're finished with this section i'm gonna stop the uh like looking at everything and right now we're, we're doing our best to not do a full flip through because that's the one rule we got deathless nature uh advantage on saves against disease and poison uh resistance poison damage advantage on death saves i love it uh don't need to eat drink or breathe you don't need to sleep uh you can chill out for four hours to do a long rest uh, and you know, the big one, knowledge from a uh, past life. So when you make an ability check, you uses a skill. You can roll a d6 after. You can roll a d6 immediately after seeing the number on the d20 and add the number on the d6 to the check. You can use this a number of times to equal to your proficiency and gain all expended uses when you finish a long rest. So it's like a uh, super self-guidance. I think that's an easy way to do it. Oh, geez, it's right here. So here's your guy. Uh, wary and confused, a reborn emerges after the infamous apparatus of mordant malfunctions. Very similar to Warforged, but yeah, you have a lot more flexibility with your flavor. All right, so I'm going to, let's see. Let's do one more quick pause, and then uh, we'll, we'll move on. Boop, boop, boop. Okay, so for the rest of this, we'll have it up in the little box, but uh, we're trying to avoid the full screenshot flip through, so you get to stare at this beautiful red face. <laughs> uh, okay, so dark bargains are in here, and dark bargains uh, are a special benefits, uh, special benefits that your character can get. So different books have had different perks for starting uh, with things, and specific, yeah, wait for the other videos. Uh, show the subclass. Am I, are these coming in late? Oh, yeah, okay. We did we did skip the subclasses. How did we skip the subclasses? Oh, the subclasses are coming up in a second. We'll be back with the subclasses. We'll be back with the subclasses full screen. Podcast mode activated. Uh, okay, so dark bargains are cool perks that your character can get. They're, they're upsides and they're downsides. Uh, and this, as the player gets to choose one... Uh, cool i don't i mean that works for me <laughs> listening thank you okay so there are a couple different dark bargains and i'm sure of course you can make your own uh we'll go through a couple of these but remember we'll do standalone videos for all these for in depth echoing soul your soul isn't your own or at least it wasn't always yours uh that gives you some proficiencies uh it gives you extra languages uh and when you make an attack roll ability check saving throw and roll one on it, uh, some some bad stuff can happen as ghosts basically take you over for a second. Uh, you might be charmed or frightened or blinded. So upsides, downsides, spooky stuff. Gathered whispers, you are haunted by spiritual beings. Uh, you learn the message cantrip. Uh, you get kind of like a shield effect, a, uh, a once per long rest shield, like a... Uh, voices from beyond immediately after you make an attack roll. So similar to that thing, if you do an attack roll ability check or saving throw, roll a one, uh, you have downsides. 
sounds like this book stealth re- crit fails. Yeah, well, it's only it's only if you take one of these dark bargains, and you don't have to. So yes, but I don't think it's force. Similar to the supernatural, exactly, exactly. Okay, let's see. Uh, I'm dying over here. One sec, I'm sorry. Okay, thank you. And remember, this is just the first look. We'll have we'll have full video coverage later. Uh, Living Shadow. The shadow you cast is animate and ever-present. Uh, you get Mage Hand, and it looks like spooky shadows. Shadow Strike. When you make a melee attack, you can increase the reach by 10 feet. Uh, but, again, when you do that attack, ability check, same throw and roll one. Uh, you, you basically have Bane on you for a little while. Mist Walker. Uh, you get Misty Step, and you can cast it with, uh, with uh, spell slots. Or you can cast it with no spell slot, once per long rest. Uh, when you enter a domain, you know where you're at. And if something is a Mist Talisman, <laughs> you don't want to hear his sneezes. <laughs> uh, I, I am legendary for my sneezes. Thank you. I'm, I'm really sorry, everybody. Okay, uh, and, but... The downside for this one is really interesting. Poison Roots. When you finish a long rest, the world around you in a 10-mile radius becomes a siphon that will eventually leech you of your vitality. If you stay in that area uh, for a number of weeks equal... Sorry. You can remain in that area safely for a number of weeks equal to your constitution modifier, so at least one. Uh, after that, every long rest you take, you must succeed a DC 15 con save or gain a level of exhaustion that can't be removed. I plan, no fun allowed, I plan on dropping my own domains of dread by the time the book comes out. Is each domain uniform in the way it's presented, or are they all over the place? Uh, a mi- Miss Talisman uh, is something that's later in the book that I haven't actually fully read yet. Remember, we just got this today, so uh, we're, we're initial impressioning. Uh, domains of dread, they are all over the place. Uh, they're short, some are big, some are little. So it talks about a domain of dread can be an entire country. Or it can be literally one building. Yeah, cameras are switched because we don't. We for right now we're trying to stay away from the full screen video screenshots, as the one rule I received. Uh, second skin. So before I go into that, <laughs> I thank you everybody so much for this one. Second. Uh, okay. Thank you. Uh, cool. Or no fun allowed. Yeah. So there, there is, there's information on building one. So you, you've got, you got a plan. Uh, it's not sponsored by Kleenex sponsored by paper towel because I'm powerful. Uh, one building in DMV domain of dread. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So second skin. So this is basically this here. Let's, let's look at this one. Ooh. Stop. That's my Amazon friend. Okay. <laughs> yeah, no, they are. It is rough, and that's why I'm all red, but cool. Uh, bu- bu- bu. That is true. Dungeoneer's pack. Okay, so second skin. Let's let's take a look at this one. So you gain one of, this is like the flavor. An exaggerated version of your own form. Hybrid. Uh, angel, demon, aberrant form. Do any of these sound like this could maybe be somewhere like a werewolf? I know, Ted. I don't know what's up with Ted. Okay. So, transformation. Yeah, let's move these out. Transformation. You cast alter self. And so you just, you can turn basically, and so you flavor alter self as your new form. So, like, if you want to be a werewolf, congratulations. You're you're a lycanthrope. <laughs> like, it's it's so cool. And when you use it, some of the cosmetic aspects remain. So you might have that hairy wolf hair or whatever. <laughs> uh, I, I think that's like, just like such an easy way to get you so close to it. 
uh, without getting into specific rules. Uh, but also, you have to pick a downside. Uh, when can the... I know. I feel bad for Steve. Truthfully, when I found out I was going to get this, Steve was my first thought. <laughs> it's, just, it's like Ravenloft's his whole, his whole deal. Uh, so some things can force your, your change. Oh, whatever. So I think it's cool, easy, elegant way to do it. Check that out. So uh, Symbiote, you can be Venom. And stay tuned for the video for full in-depth on that. Uh, but this one, I want to show you one other one in detail. So Touch of Death. You become... <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, basically, you are you get like a gross touch. And the whole... So all these other ones have like this huge paragraph about it. Death Touch. As an action, you make one-armed strike. On a hit, it takes a D10, necrotic. And that scales up all the way up to 4D10. When you hit a target with an attack roll and deal necrotic damage, which you would with this, you ignore its resistance. When you start your turn grappling a creature, it takes 1d10 necrotic. Just straight up evil poison, or not poison, but rot touch. Very, very cool. Okay, here's the, here's the hat. <laughs> there you go. This is as close as you're going to get. I know. So this death touch thing, that those are going to be some crazy abilities. But, I mean, you only make one attack, and it uses your full action. So I don't know. Yeah, those cats are crazy. Okay. So here's our last section. We're going to do page through, but we're not going to page through the whole book. Okay, let me, I, I did a PDF. Let me get this pulled up. College of Spirits. It's an unarmed strike, yeah, but use your action to do it. Okay. College of Spirits. Guiding Whispers. So this is the same. 60 foot reach uh, guidance. Very cool. Spiritual focus. Uh, this ch this spirit board used to be talking board. Uh, but otherwise, that's the same. But this part is different. This changed a little bit. Starting at 6th level, when you cast a bard spell that deals damage or restores hit points through the spiritual focus, roll a d6 and you gain a bonus to 1 damage or healing roll. The spell equal. Previously, it just said 1 roll of the spell. So I think that's functionally the same. Now, this is tricky, right? Through the spiritual focus. Because uh, there's a list I saw on Reddit that of all the eligible spells that you would normally cast through a focus. And they were really, it was a limited spell list. But what are everybody's thoughts on casting a spell through a focus that doesn't have the required component like if you can you cast a verbal spell through your focus i don't know if you can this is good if it's not it's not super great one sec oh my god train monk Hey, Chris. Uh, yeah, so I would allow it. I would I would absolutely allow. Though officially, it must have an M. You're right, that's what, that's what I'm saying. It's weird because it's literally a list of like six spells or something. But there you go. Making dinner, so going to be listening. Thank you, Gossip and Goblins. But it limits that type of bard. Uh... Okay, tales from beyond. So the uh, the general the rules for the spirit table, the rules are the same. But all the 
All the names are different of the actual abilities. So like this says tailed the clever animal instead of beast. But the, most of these are actually different. Can't use a rhythm maker's drum. Uh, so uh, I'm going to save going through in detail all of these for the video, the class video. Uh, most of them are generally in line with what they were supposed to be or really what, the, what they were in the UA. This is very cool. Uh, but they are a little different. Most of them are a little different. So stay tuned for that video. I'm going to try to get these pushed out this week. I was having supper. We did. Yes. Okay, here. For you, Chris, we'll jump back to the Dampier real quick. So, yeah. So they did clarify the bite uh, is uh, it uses just your con. I mean, like, logically, of course, it was going to be just your con, but here it clarifies it. Uh, and the bite is now just the piercing damage. So if you had hex up, if you had flame tongue runes on your teeth or something. Uh, one thing that also is on all these now, Chris, is ancestral legacy. If you replace a race with this, you keep its skill proficiencies and special speeds. Otherwise, you get two skills. And they're all only one creature type. So flip, flip back if you want more detail. Uh, okay, so real quick, let's take a look at the Warlock, the Undead. So I very briefly played the UA version of this for like one game and then life changed. But Okay, so uh, all the spells are the same. I love greater invisibility. Okay, all the spells are the same. Form of Dread. This is all the same. Nothing's changed there. Now, this is what everybody's looking for right here. Grave touched. Uh, this part, you don't need to eat, whatever, that's the same. This, the damage part, has been appropriately, I feel, and remember, I'm pretty strong about not ha having feelings about something being too strong or too weak because you can change it, but that was very strong. So once during each of your turns, when you hit a creature with an attack roll and roll damage against it, you can replace the damage type with necrotic. So... Those Eldritch Blasts, only one of those. I, that's how I read this. How do you all read this? I read that as one of those bolts would become necrotic instead of force. And then when you deal an additional, you deal an additional damage die when you deal necrotic. So you're not, you're no longer pumping out f uh, four bolts of 2d10 necrotic. One attack roll. Okay, cool. Uh, one second. All right, thanks everybody. Uh, Necrotic Husk. Uh, this is renamed from Mortal Husk. I believe this is exactly the same. I only roll once to hit with Eldritch Blast. Ooh, are you talking about like Magic Missile style? That's interesting. Huh. Uh, Spirit Projection. It, uh, I agree with you. Bowani, uh, especially if you're in one of these campaigns where you'll be up against a lot of undead with resistances. But if you take one of those, uh, if you take that touch, death touch thing, you get to ignore that resistance. Uh, spirit projection, I believe this is the same. And necrotic husk, I believe, to be the same other than the rename. Uh, so I haven't gone through the entire book yet. We just got it today, but I do not believe there are any new spells or items. If there are, they're like buried in the text, but I, I don't think so. Backgrounds. Okay, so let's switch out. We don't want to make anybody mad. Sorry. Okay, so uh, backgrounds, they have a bunch of really cool options for adapting current backgrounds into these. So, for example, Inheritor. You know, a lot of people may not love that background, uh, but it has options where uh, for it to replace the background feature. 
Dampier is humanoid only, yes. Oh. Good catch. Yeah, each creature of your choice. Ooh. Uh, Reborn is humanoid only. And yeah, they did scrap the duel. I wonder how many times they're going to try it before giving up. Uh, other backgrounds are trauma survivor. Uh, a little too real. Uh, traveler. Uh, information about adding horror character personality traits, ideals, bonds, and flaws. Uh, it includes suggested backgrounds, such as the haunted one, uh, a hair, uh, uh, investigator. And a whole new list of trinkets to start out with when you get those like little knickknacks that your character can build on. Uh, all themed around horror. A warm fist-sized egg case. Uh, an electrum coin with your face on one side. Vial of perfume, the scent of which only certain creatures can detect. A key to the family crypt. Dual type of monsters. Uh, and... I'd have to look to see if it's the exact same for an investigator. A whole section, creating domains of dread. This is going to be all about it. And earlier in the book, it talks about how there are countless domains of dread. They can be as big or as little as you want. Dead bird, spooky birds. And then we've got the types, the genres of horror. Uh, body horror. This is the one my wife will not want to ever, ever even pretend to talk about. Are there are the trinkets new or the same as? Oh, actually, uh, maybe they're the same as Curse of Strahd. I'm not sure. I love this. Thank you. Uh, body horror, cosmic horror. This I like this one. Spooky. Uh, if you ever want to play some cosmic horror stuff, check out my uh, far touched uh, homebrew race. It's built around surviving eldritch horrors of the Far Realm, uh, available to my patrons and on D&D Beyond. <laughs> Would not play this book at all, TBH. Well, and that's okay. This book isn't for everybody. It might be the same as Curse of Strahd. Like I said at the start, Curse of Strahd is embarrassingly my biggest gap of knowledge in all of D&D. &D. So Cosmic Horror, Dark Fantasy. So this is kind of like evil king kind of stuff. It's not about here. Let's let's go back. Uh, yeah, we'll skip it. We'll save that for a video. Uh, dark fantasy, folk horror. So that's a picture of a goat. Oh, there. Uh, one of the suggested things earlier is uh, to make your character afraid of goats, and then every time, uh, <laughs> and then like every time you see a goat, ask how many legs it has. Which is hilarious because uh, one of my groups uh, thing we did a one of our players even made a song about weird horses because uh, we would roll a d8 to see how many legs a horse has, so a horse could have one d8 legs, <laughs> and so for them to do that with a goat, I is perfect. Ghost stories and these all have like example monsters of ranging CRs, uh, villain types. Uh, torments for that dark lord about like why they're the dark lord horror settings all sorts of stuff gothic horror disaster horror and these I guess are a little shorter birds uh, disaster horror occult detective stories psychological horror slasher horror and then we go into all the domains alright and then give me one more set
All right. Thanks, everybody. Uh, again, if you're just tuning in, my allergies are crazy today. I'm really sorry. Uh, but each time I have some problems, I'm going to go back to that starting screen. Um, so if you haven't already, uh, please subscribe to the channel. We're almost to 600. Uh, I'd love to get up to a thousand someday. And yes, Tyler, thank you for looking. Uh, but if we could get to 600 tonight, I would appreciate that. And if you can put any, uh, likes on this video, uh, share it, whatever, anything you can do is helpful. Barovia. Anybody, you know, uh, anything about a place called Barovia a domain of the first vampire? Does that sound familiar? Get this channel to 1k, please. Yes. If I'm going to be dead serious with you, I getting to 1,000 right now to me is more important to get the community posts than to begin that monetization trail. The community posts, I not sneezing blood to not yet, but ooh. Uh, watch the birds whenever. Um, the, being able to not being able to do community posts is the biggest, most annoying thing in the world to me. So. Please help subscribe. Consider supporting through Patreon. Uh, on Instagram, that's where I post the minis that I paint every Tuesday and Thursday. And every Friday night on our Discord, we do live painting. So come check us out. You don't even have to be a patron or anything for that. You just come hang out. We've got links in the video description. Adventures in Barovia. Hunting Strahd. In incarnations of Tatiana. Blutspur, Domain of Alien Memories. So we're not going to go through each of these in this video. This, this guy is killing it. Thank you. Oh, absolutely I will, Chris. Thank you. Julie, can you take a note? <laughs> Thanks. Uh, so there's one. Uh, Ivan Delisnia in his favorite clockwork pram. Oh, my God. I'm never. I'm, we're not showing that one. That one's crazy. Uh, Borka. Oh, this lady's cool. Look at, look at this one. She's a Isolt, 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 with the sword Nepenthe. I don't know. She's, I don't know what she, oh, she's, she's an Ladrin who uses the Cambian stat block and she's a Holy Avenger. <laughs> wow. That's cool. She's pretty Sith. Anything worth noting in Barovia? Stay tuned for the video. It's basically a lightsaber. Oh, th oh, this. Al Alcio Baron Metis. Here, let's go full screen for her too. Very cool. Very, very cool. Uh, yeah, this, this is a Holy Avenger. <laughs> all right. We don't want to get in trouble, so we're not going to do... Uh, and then these all have like, how do you save this domain? How do you help people here? Who are the allies? Who are the enemies? Who are the rivals? How do I make the orange block larger? <laughs> uh, Sal, you don't. I'm sorry. Uh, we're So we got this book early. And the one rule they said was to not do a full page by page, full screen preview. So that's why we're keeping most of this up in that small screen. But. I'm going to do standalone videos for each of these topics. I'm going to try to get through as many as I can this week, assuming I start to feel a little bit better. So stay tuned. I love a menswear inspired look on a woman. Absolutely. Especially when there's that pose. It's just, it's so cool. Okay. One sec. Okay, thanks everybody. Uh, here's uh, they're just this is such a cool book. The art is fantastic, and I do I yeah so I definitely think these little uh, I don't know if you can see it in there, but these these little names on the inside I think those are the artist names, which is absolutely fantastic. Uh, for my videos, almost all of my videos. I, uh, I use artwork from D and D books. And so usually I'll pull that from D and D beyond. And if the artist name is in the book, so like in the, uh, Theros book, the artist name, I, I believe is listed with each one. So I always put that there. Uh, but a lot of them, there's just no artists. I mean, they're at the front of the book. There's a paragraph of 200 artists, but you have no way to know who's what, what. So I always just 
are discredited by the art name from book X. So I'm thrilled to be able to get more credit. <laughs> uh, gaming gang, absolutely. Uh, please join Fry Minis Discord. Yeah. I'd love to hear about frogs. All right, so these domains of dread. Remember, this is just the first look. So we're, we're going to do a real video. Uh, Mordant, Domain of the Haunted. Rish, Rishmula. Buy this book. Yeah, Dungeon Club. I'm telling you, this is a great book. So, um, oh my God, I'm forgetting. What was the last one? Candlekeep. Candlekeep, I thought was a great book. The adventures, the little standalone, pick and pluck, pop them in here and there. I thought it was great for what it was. I love anthology series books. But as far as campaign setting, DM tips, and how to build stuff, this book is fantastic. I think this is a book that will be a very popular book for a very long time. Maybe not with players. I could see a lot of DMs saying no to some of these character options, but I think DMs using this as a as a guide to building their own campaigns, it's gonna be great. All right, let me let me go back, Bawani. Oh, yeah. One second, one second. Investigator, uh, investigator, you relentlessly seek the truth. Perhaps you're motivated by belief in the law and a sense of universal justice. Uh, it's all about finding hidden truth. Uh, the here the feature for it is official inquiry. Your experience of gaining access to people uh, through fast talking, determination, whatever. Uh, additionally, local law enforcement has firm opinions about you viewing you either as a nuisance or one of their own. Is that the same? All right. Domains of dread. Oh, here, here you go. This is one everybody was talking about. All right. Uh... Is this Sire 1313? Seer 1313? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> if I've got two gaps in my uh, D&D knowledge, one, the Ravenloft, two, <laughs> is all this stuff. I don't know. Uh, okay. The previews of these topics come. Even if I wouldn't play it. Yeah, thank you, Julie. It's pronounced either way. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. So this is the morning rail. Thunder it thunders through domains. Ever trying to escape the disaster. Salute its passenger. So it's like a ghost train. Very, very cool. The domain itself or the Dark Lord is the last passenger. So you see, like some of these, some of like Barovia, pages about it. This is a paragraph. But sometimes, uh as a DM, all we need is a direction to run Tyler MC hit me up about Eberron all right hop on my discord please I'd love to I'd love to talk to you uh, I've got a link to join the fry minis discord in the description below ghost train ghostbusters 2 Boop. all right so many and a lot of these are literally just like a paragraph or two Travelers in the Mist. Okay, so I think this is where we'll get that Mist token. Uh, Keepers of Societies. Uh, it talks about how people... Oh, a whole section on Vistani. Keith Baker's going to do a supplement on DM's Guild. Probably has to do with this. Awesome. Very cool stuff. Information about building a Vistani character. Why would your character leave the caravan? What do you know about navigating? Why are you away from your people? How do you feel about it? Views of the Vistani. Very cool. I can't wait to read this in depth. We'll do a video on that too. Let's see. Uh, looking for missed tokens. Oh, here you go. Erasmus. A lot of you were. No, no mechanics for Vistani. I bet it says you're just like a, you play a human. Most Vistani are human, but many bands incorporate other people, particularly halflings, wood elves, orcs, and tieflings. Vistani have a range of skin, eye, and hair colors. So you can be anything. All right. Sorry, guys. One second. All 
All right, Lamordia. Let's uh, let's flip back to that. Let me find that. I think I've seen that a couple times. Requested. Do do do. Lamordia, Lamordia, Lamordia. I'm assuming that's the domain of dread, right? Yeah, uh, and if you want another cool way to do humans, check out my adventurous human. I think it's way better than variant human or the standard human. Check that out in the uh, D&D Beyond. Stat blocks for Dark Lords. Hold on a second, and we will take it. Okay, Lamorty, page 138. So what is Lamordia? The domain of snow and stitched flesh. We've got a map of Lamordia. Uh, genre, uh, Dark Lord, Victra Mortenheim, genres, body horror and gothic horror, hallmarks, amoral science, bizarre constructs, frigid wilderness, mutagenic radiation, mist talismans, animate finger, glowing minerals, preserved limb. Ooh. Life is cheap in Lamordia. It's a good start line. <laughs> uh, frigid land of barren mountains. And, oh, and so it's just like with all the Vistani and everything, Lamordian characters. How were you raised in Lamordia? What's your relationship with Ludendorff University? How has the land scarred you? This is a great book. And again, WizKid or WizKid, geez Louise, Wizards of the Coast sent this over. They, I didn't pay for it. They didn't pay me anything. It's just, here's a book. That's it. Two books, but same thing. Uh, okay, so Vistani. Uh, you've got Erasmus. You've got uh, Esmeralda. It's just called Ez. Easy. Uh, it says to use the Assassin stat block or use her stat block from Curse of Strahd. Uh, same thing. We've got recommendations for most of these main characters. Rudolph Van Richten. Horror Adventures. Okay, I'm sorry, one more. All right, we're at 599 subscribers on YouTube. Can I get one more? Can we break 600? How many likes do we have on the video? Hopefully a couple. Running a horror game. Gameplay questions. Reinforce expectations. Run a session zero. Customize your experience. Establish boundaries. Accessibility. Locations. Music. Lighting. Props. Distraction. Horror pacing. Logistics. Undermine reality. Idle uneasiness. Out of time. Parallel scenes. These are all ways to run a game. Uh, Weather May Foxgrove Twins. Uh, uh, it says to use a druid and a veteran. And obviously you can change whatever you want, but those are just the recommendations. For the Weather May Twins. Give just enough hope. End on cliffhangers. Describe horror how to describe before it arrives as it approaches up close as it attacks as it's wounded this is this is the best how to run a game book i think wizards has better than the dmg horror game play horror threats encourage space subvert cliches oh uh not big on horror i find a lot of my favorite stories are in the horror genre because it's so good for giving people common cause and fulfilling narratives yeah First time we've cross-referenced a book like that? What do you mean? This is the, like, Monster Manual? No fun allowed, thank you. I hit 600. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, I appreciate it. We just hit 500 not long ago. Uh, this channel, we've been chugging along for a little while, so I'm excited to, to keep growing. I'm hoping this video and all these videos help out a little bit. So thank you, everybody. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Avoid horror cliches. Yeah. No, he means what when it said. Oh. Well, 
Yes, horror cliches are awesome. It says avoid them and use them. Oh, okay. I got you, Tyler. Ask permission. Players put considerable thought and investment into their characters. Do you hear that, Julie? <laughs> Don't impose rules on characters that might make players not want to play them anymore. Don't force lineages. Don't force dark gifts. If there's an opportunity for a player to use one, ask them. Oh my god. And I got ninja. One sec. Never try to kill my character. Fix the role. Yeah. After the horror, check in with the players. Uh, Taroka deck and spirit board. Rules on how to use these things. Horror toolkit. Curses. Building curses. Components of curses. How to use them. Time durations. Persistent curses. Sample curses. Oh my god. Fear and stress. Seeds of fear. Using seeds of fear. Stress. Stress effects. Haunted traps. Detecting haunted traps. Disarming haunted traps. Sample haunted traps. Ugh. This lady, her face has become a thumb. The faceless malice haunted trap claims a victim. <laughs> yeah. Uh, curses are something I need to... Uh, I threw a couple cursed items and everybody hates me now. <laughs> and the curse? You always feel cold. I don't think that's that bad of a curse. Uh, survivors. Using survivors. Cutscenes, dreams, memories, mists, terrible freedom, what's old is new, tools for terror, creating a survivor. So this has rules. So like if you um this would be ooh. This would be great if you're doing frost maiden and you're in one of those caves and you find somebody who's like frostbitten and barely alive, and this has directions on how to play that as like a wounded character, as like an NPC ally. Your socks are always wet. Yeah. You exploited my cord coldness and cursed it on my character. I'm in slippers and a sweater right now. And I am roasting. But survivor talents. So uh, sacrificing shield. So if you pick the squire survivor stat block. And remember, we'll do a full video. Uh, when a creature you can see makes an attack against the target, you can see within five feet of you, you can use your reaction to become the target of the attack instead. If you're wielding a shield, you can reduce the damage by a d10. Once you use this, you can't do it again until you complete a short rest. So these little, like, minions basically throw their body in your way. I think it's cool. All right, one sec. And we have stat blocks for the different types. We've got Apprentice, Sneak, Disciple, Squire. And is this... This is, is this an adventure? Do we have a whole adventure? Oh my god, we have a whole adventure in this book. There's a whole... Minions could also grow with the Tasha Psychic. Absolutely. Like the Werewolf. Those were uh, Dark... Dark Blessings. Dark blessings. Flipping back. I believe there are dark blessings. Dark gifts. Thank you. Dark, dark gifts. Uh, House of Lament is an adventure for a party of four to six first level characters who will progress to third level. Dark bargains. Give yourself allergies. <laughs> oh, uh, it, it was dark. Dark gift descriptions. So yes, they are dark gifts. Dark gifts. A uh, dark bargain is a way to get a dark gift. So uh, Strahd, let's say your character doesn't have a dark gift. Strahd might come to you and say, hey, uh, I know it's just us talking, the rest of your party's asleep, but uh, I'll give you this dark gift if you just let me know when, you're, when your group's coming or whatever. So you can eat, that's a dark bargain. Or they might be like, like Strahd might almost TPK and he's like, hey, 
all of you take this dark, dark bargain with me. I don't let you live. Student loans. We're trying. <laughs> 50K, we're trying. I wouldn't wish these allergies on Eric. Yeah. No, my, I, I absolutely hate that. This is my big stream. Big stream. Big, most viewers I've ever had on a stream. And here I am barely surviving. Uh, is Yes, like a Warlock's pack. Yes. Uh, okay. So this whole adventure, seances, starting the adventure, adventure flow. We've got maps in here. Oh, we've got Dyson Logos maps. I like Dyson Logos maps. Oh, a whole adventure flipping through. We're not going to detail. Monsters of Ravenloft. <laughs> You're doing great. Thanks. All right. One more quick break, and then uh, let's take a look at some monsters. Uh, the dark bargain I made to get these was uh, I got to meet Julie. Yes. Uh, I haven't seen any stat blocks for wheelchair yet. But here's a character in wheelchair. <laughs> uh, okay. So this talks about modify I, I haven't read this far yet Remember, we just got this book today uh but it talks about twisting monsters to fit horror genre so let's find out together what that means oh okay uh make it personal engage all his senses emphasize wrongness when you're describing your monster make it notorious monstrous tactics use good tactics uh monstrous minions you like uh example minions mind this minion can't be compelled to act in a way contrary to its master's instructions that's cool creating unique nightmares <laughs> i wish we could have pets look at this thing so we've got a whole list of monsters organized by cr Body taker plants, podlings. We got a medium size, like a baby one with 26 hit points, up to the huge body taker plant with 92 hit points. Boneless. Uh, okay, brain in a jar. Uh, so the stat block. I'm not familiar with the stat block off the top of my head. And all of these also contain the proficiency bonus listed, which is great. Uh, highest CR that I see is a 21. For a greater star spawn emissary. Wait, is Jameson here? Ugh. <laughs> okay. Uh, flipping through. And remember, we're going to do a standalone video uh, on these carrion stalker. Ugh, creepy. A carrionette. Like a marionette, but carrion. Ugh. Death's head. That's cool. Uh, Doolahan. Oh, that's what that is. Oh, okay. Uh, brain in a jar. That's, well, that's what we'll, we'll dive on on that a little bit. Uh, actions are chill touch, mind blast, and innate spell casting. It has detect sentience, magic resistance, and unusual nature. Uh, it is CR3 for brain in a jar. All right. Uh, oh, this is this is a cool one, Gramishka. Here, let's uh, let's pop up for this one.
Oh, we're muted. We're muted. We're muted. Thank you. Uh, I'm cool. I turned it off to sneeze. Okay, I should be back. Uh, so not only is this just like awesome, but look at that. Magic allergy. Magic allergy. This is this is mine now. I'm claiming this. Magical energy. <laughs> you get a stream of the book. Yeah. Hopefully that's the only time that happened. Uh, I hope so. I'm a I'm a very professional streamer. Uh, very cool, very cool creature. Yeah, the Grameshka explodes and dies, and then a swarm appears. Uh, spell redirection. In response to a spell attack missing the swarm, the swarm causes the spell to hit another creature of its choice within 30 feet that it can see. Whew. Good luck. Yeah, we got a lot of good video content ahead of us. Uh, Jiang Shi. That's cool. I don't know if that's like an Asian inspired creature, but awesome to see. Loop Guru. What is a, a, a humanoid who succumbs to a Loop Guru's lycanthropy becomes a werewolf? Loop Guru possesses a strain of lycanthropy more virulent than carried by common werewolves. So it's like a feral werewolf, I guess. Uh, hopping. I don't see anything about hopping. Uh, it can change shape. Uh, its speed is actually only 20. Should it hop? Here. I don't see anything about hopping, do you? Oh, I guess, I guess fear for its reflection could, but no, I don't think so. Oh, well, that's a little disappointing in that case. Oh, sorry, hit, hit the mute on that one. Uh, Necro Iker, Iker, Nosferatu. So, I guess a Nosferatu is a Dark Lord. So here's Nosferatu. No, this isn't even a Dark Lord. Maybe they don't have stat blocks. Priests. Relentless Killer. Chicken Head Man. It's always good. And yeah. So here, here's the strongest one. We'll, we'll take a look at that. That's CR21. I'll go back to take a look. DC23. Or take 5D12 as a legendary. Whew. Oh, look at that. Four. Four legendary resistances. Yeah, I switched back to take a look at this one. Huh. Swarms of maggots. Inquisitors. Unspeakable horrors. Were ravens. Oh. Look at that. Vampiric. Vampiric mind flayers. Its head is like a flower. That's cool. Drink sapience. And zombie clot. Zombie plague spreader. Swarm of zombie limbs. And the spirit board. Uh, okay, give me one second and then we'll flip back to try to find a Dark Lord. All right, so I guess 
Let's go to the first couple domains. Uh, let's see if like Strad is in here, for example. That would be the easiest one. Uh, it lists the Dark Lord as Strad. Oh, okay. So, okay. So here, here's an example. Um, Strahd's power and dominion. Strahd is a patient and dramatic mastermind. His statistics are similar to those of a vampire, and his spellcasting prowess is formidable, enabling him to face most threats directly. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, so that's it. So I guess you would need Curse of Strahd to get the actual Strahd stat block. Otherwise, it's just a vampire. Uh, that's interesting. Uh, let's look at Blutspur. The god brain of Blutspur is the Dark Lord. So let me... Uh, let's see. Overmind, it commands mind flayers and intellect devourers. Uh, it, vampiric, it makes vampiric mind flayers. So it, it doesn't even suggest a stat block. So, no, I guess you're kind of hit or miss on stat blocks. Uh, let's try one more. Let's try Borka, Domain of Desire and Deceit. Uh, Dark Lord, Ivana, and Ivan. Uh, information to create Borkan characters. I love a good integrated character. Uh, yeah, so Ivana, it says her stats are similar to a spy. And Ivan is similar to a noble. To a noble. Uh, yeah, I would use Elder Brain, Elder Brain stat block too, but, and just make it up, but it is not explicitly listed. Uh, okay, so like I said, today is just a first look at this as we flip through the pages uh hopefully uh everybody <laughs> from wizards of the coast is okay with the uh the sharing that we did uh i feel we i think we'd all agree we did not do a page by page flip through uh on screen no yeah i know is cr8 yeah I, <laughs> I don't know that's um what a weak dark lord and it does talk about how a dark lord might not necessarily be super powerful uh it's just that's just who that domain of dread is wrapped around i did uh, thank you everybody again i'm really sorry about the allergies i appreciate you sticking around uh a thread stained with black ink chicken blood and burnt talisman yeah okay um so please like please subscribe uh join us on discord check us out on patreon on twitter on instagram uh, we'll have more videos out hopefully this week assuming i start to feel a little bit better uh with more in-depth information on each kind of chapter and section uh look forward to making those thank you all so 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 much for joining this is i had an absolute blast despite falling apart uh thank you all for joining please 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 check us out on discord i'd love to talk uh otherwise thank you what about jander jander will have to wait for next time we're we're, we're good <laughs> uh okay everybody thank you we'll see you next time